In this video, we'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the 2023 Ordinary Level Maths Leave Insert. I recommend you try the question before watching, and if you get stuck anywhere, feel free to ask for help in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. Check out my channel for a playlist with all the other questions. Question three has a couple of algebra questions, very common algebra questions, and a question about the number line. We start off by, they give us this equation here and just ask us to solve it. Now that just means find x. Now this is a very common type of question. You'll, you'll, you'll do this five or six times every leave insert. It's usually just in the middle of a question. This is just on its own here. If you have trouble with this, you do need to practice it. You do need to be able to do a question like this very confidently. And um, the good news is any maths book any maths teacher, uh, well the maths book will have loads of a list of questions in it and most maths teachers will have a worksheet and they'll happily give you these and you can work on them all weekend, ask questions when you go into school the next week, you should be able to get good at these. These are the sort of thing you should be able to study, um, even if you don't know it now. Let me walk through it as, as best I can. Uh, first thing we do, there's a tree multiplying a whole bracket, so we can get rid of that. Let's multiply that in. 3 times 2 is 6. Sorry, 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 4 is 12. Minus 5 equals 3. Next thing, very simply, let's get these two numbers together. Uh, 6x, 12 minus 5 is plus 7 equals 3. Next thing, I like to leave x on its own. Ultimately, we want x equals. So leave x where it is. Leave the 6x where it is. It's hard to get 6 out of the x now. Let's just move the 7. Let's get rid of that 7. We take 7 away from both sides. That leaves on the left the 7 disappears and on the right 3 minus 7. That's 6x is equal minus 4. Last thing we need to do is get rid of the 6. The 6 is multiplying, so to get rid of the 6 we divide. So uh, 6 divided by 6, it disappears, it's a 1. 1x is left. And on the right minus 4 divided by 6. That's pretty much your answer. I think that you might lose one mark for this because we can, we can um, divide both these numbers by two. Uh, your calculator will do that for you as well, by the way. Uh, put that in your calculator and your calculator will actually give you this back, minus two over three. Two goes into four two times, two goes into six three times. So x is equal minus two over three. Okay, for part B, they give us uh, three different parts, one, two, and three, and they have a number line for each of them. This is on your page already. So you have to fill in uh, this number set. So this is, um, it's, it's, a, it's actually a really short question if you know what you're doing. If you don't, it's, it's gonna be nearly impossible. But they do like to ask a question something like this. It, there's lots of room in the exam for them to ask different types of things in this sort of world. So you do have to have a bit of an understanding if you want to get 100% of or, z, and n. The, not, the real numbers, the integers, and the natural numbers. Now, honestly, if you didn't know these, a student could easily still get over 90% every leave insert. So it's not the end of the world if you don't know what's going on here. But let me show you how the question goes. Uh, they ask, um, let me just double check the numbers there x is less than or equal 2.8 and x is an element of the real numbers and they want us to put that in up here. So that would some, be something like this. First we'd have to find where 2.8 is. It's about here and it's just, um, I mean, I'll, I'll make a bit of a, in the exam, one mark or one uh, pen line will do, but I just want to make a bit of a mess so you can see um, nice and easily where I'm going. All the way down. This stays going forever, by the way. Uh, sometimes you might put an arrow there. They're not going to be too strict on that. They, they just want to see something like this. They want to see start at 2.8 going that way. That's all they want to see. And I think most students would probably have drawn this for this question. It's the trouble arises in the next parts. Um, now, going actually, you know what? I need to... No, I won't bother rubbing this out. I'll, I think you'll be able to see what I mean um, for the next two parts. So what's different with Z and OR is basically, because these look identical except for OR and Z. OR, the real numbers, is pretty much every number you can think of. The only numbers that aren't in this is pi, uh, square root of 2, numbers that have no ending. 
but every real number you can think of, 2.8, everything in between, they're all here. Z is just the integers. The only numbers in Z are minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, all of those are in it. And minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Nothing in between. Not, not half, not minus 1.2, nothing in between. So to draw something like that, we'd have to, uh, let me get rid of that dot actually. We'll put a big dot here, a big dot here, big dot here. So this is for part two. That's how you would answer that. On the part two's number line, there'd be no line, there'd just be these dots. That's what um, x being less than 2.8. That means x is either two, one, zero, minus one, minus two, anything that minus a million is also in it. That's how we do that one. Uh, for the last one, I've tried to find a different color marker. Again, you have it, we could start, actually, you know, let me just uh, draw this again really quickly. There we go, this is for number three, down here. X is less than 2.8 again, but X is an element of N. Not Z, not R, so what, what is N? N looks very similar to Z. It's all the real numbers. It's, sorry, it's all the whole numbers, all the, the round numbers, except no minuses. And, um, oh, I don't think there's zero. I think zero is not in it, but uh, actually, you know what? I checked when I went through this question. I think zero wasn't in it, but it did say that it would accept zero or not zero, but I, I don't think it is in it. So um, let's see, we'd have three, four, two, one, and so on, all these. How we draw this last one? X less than 2.8. Well, two is less than 2.8, and two is a natural number. One is less than 2.8, and one is a natural number. Zero is less than 2.8, and I don't think is a natural number. And minus one is less than 2.8, but it's definitely not a natural number. That's it, that's just these two numbers here. That's how you would draw that. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, it's a weird sort of question. You really just need to understand what all of these are. They will ask you a trick question like this every exam. Uh, you need to know what the natural num real numbers are. It's pretty much everything. It's all the whole numbers and it's fractions. Natural numbers are just the whole numbers, minuses and positives. Natural numbers, sorry, integers, I should have said there. Natural numbers, all the whole numbers, just the positives. Okay, um, let me go on to part C. Okay, part C is a simultaneous equation question. Just like in part A, this is a question you need to be able to do in your exam. It, don't worry, if you're not able to do it now, it's an easy one to study. Every single maths book will have hundreds of examples of these, and there's ways to step through, look up online. I'm about to show you a way. Um, I guarantee it will be on your exam. I, gar I guarantee it'll probably be in your exam twice um, paper one and paper two, maybe three times you might see it over the whole exam. That's worth a lot. This, like, this question alone, I think is worth like 3% of your whole exam. And you'll probably see another one similar to it. Simultaneous equations are, simultaneous equations are important. Okay, let's, how do we go ahead and solve it? Um, right, first thing I'd do is I'd clean up the first equation here, just to make it look a little more like the second one. So I go x minus y, and I take one from both sides. Minus one. Now it just looks a bit neater, doesn't it? X, oh, the x is together, the y is together, the numbers together. So that's the first thing I'd usually do. Sometimes there might be other numbers here you have to combine. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to get two, the, the x is the same or the y is the same, so we can take them away from each other. Um, now, the y's are already plus and minus, so I'm going to use that. Uh, first row, I'm just going to write again, 2x plus 4y is equal to 19. Second row, I'm going to multiply every one by 4. So the x times 4, the minus y by 4, and the minus 1 by 4. Now, the reason I'm allowed to do that is, like, it didn't change anything. I multiplied everything on the right, on the left by 4, everything on the right. It still equals. So I didn't really change anything, but now look, it actually matches up quite nicely. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take top row, 
and I'm just going to add it together because these are actually opposite now. And I'm going to cancel the y's. If I add the two lefts together, I have to add the two rights together. So let's go ahead. 2x plus 4, uh, 4x is 6x. 4y plus minus 4y cancels. 19 plus minus 4 is 19 minus 4, which is a 15. Now I have to get rid of the 6 here. Um, x is equal to 15 divided by 6. Um, both of them divided by 3. So that's 5 over 2. Now, so many students finish right now. So many students go, right, I'm finished. Brilliant. Happy days. <laughs> You're losing a mark. They didn't ask you to find x. They asked you to solve it. And to solve it, you have to find x and y. So we still have another bit of work to do. Uh, other students then go ahead and do all of this again, but by cancelling the x's. That's, that's a little bit of waste of time. All you need to do is pick one of these equations, any, any, any one of all of these actually, because we now know what x is. So we don't have to write x again. I'm just gonna take the top one here and show you. x minus y plus one equals zero. Instead of x, I'm just gonna write five over two. So now we just have to move everything around and solve for y. Um, let's get, uh, first of all, fractions. People hate fractions, so we're gonna get rid of that. Let's multiply it by two, and that'll get rid of it. If we do that, we have to do it to everyone. So five over two multiplied by two is five, minus two y plus two is equal, two times zero is zero. Okay, let's clean all this up. Get all the numbers to the right, all the y's on the left. Minus 2y, don't forget the minus is, is with the y, um, is equals minus 5 minus 2. Let's clean this up. Minus 2y is equal minus 7. Uh, let's divide both sides by minus 2. That cancels. Um, minus 2 has disappeared there because it divided by minus 2. Minus, well, let me write it in. Minus 7 divided by minus 2. So that's y is equal. The two minuses cancel. They become a plus 1. Um, 7 over 2. That's your final answer. x is equal 5 over 2. y is equal 7 over 2. It was a part C, so it worked out a bit awkward with fractions. Um, if it's in a part A or B, it's probably going to be a little easier. It'll work out uh, to be whole numbers. But, you know, fractions happen. You're going to have to learn to deal with it. That's what they want. They wanted to make sure you're able to do a lot of tricky parts. Uh, change the fraction. Put the fraction in. Multiply everything by 2 to get rid of a fraction. It's a, it was a harder simultaneous equation, but it's still very common. You'll see it hundreds of times. And if you haven't seen it hundreds of times, open your maths book and do hundreds of examples until you're able to do it every time. Okay, that's all from me. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you.